Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where I talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Fear the Walking Dead. A lot of interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. I thought it was really interesting when we found Grace just, like, lying in the ground. I was like, okay, so... I was like, maybe she's just taking a break, but then she gets attacked by a walker, and I'm like, okay, maybe... Oh, I was like, we see something poke. I was like, okay, it must be Morgan saving her, but then there's a girl named Athena... And then I was like, the moment, like, you see her in action, I was like, oh, that's Morgan's kid. She, like, uh, which is actually, well, God, that's actually depressing when I think about that. I was like, uh, all right, all right, I'll get to the, through the episode, and then I'll think about what I'm thinking about. I was like, that's actually even more depressing than what I thought about. Okay, okay, okay. So, really quickly, seeing her in action, I was like, oh, that's it. You got to have been trained by Morgan, but I was like, that's got to be Grace's daughter. And immediately, I was like, oh my, because obviously this turns out to be like a dream sequence and stuff like that, because at first it seemed like she couldn't remember her name, and then like, they get to the, the place she was building, and it's like, whoa, well, it's like, she's like, this, we were working on a couple of months, how was it like this? And she finds out Athena's like 16, she's like, yeah, I've been here my entire life, it's like, so it's like, she's like 16 years in the future, and then she sees Morgan, even looking at the weapon that Morgan had, and I think that speaks volumes, that means that weapon he got from, um, from, um, Emil, never got used to get in that universe, so like, it's, it stayed there, it got rusted, he never had to pick that weapon up again, so I think that speaks volumes, but, um, yeah, as he's trudging along, like, you know, she sees an older Morgan and everything, and she's like, Morgan, he's like, doesn't recognize her, and eventually she admits who she is, she's like, I'm Grace, and it's like, he's like, no, 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 we lost you, but it's like, knowing about the carousel and everything, uh, it, it clicked in his mind, like, oh, wait, you really are Grace, so in this universe, like, obviously she died after giving birth to Athena, I mean, it was just too much for her, but, um, Grace kind of figured as much. It's just because the radiation had already done a lot of damage to her and the giving birth, like, kind of pushed over the edge. So she's not alive in this universe. But her, you know, it's like, oh, well, where's my child? Did my child survive? Did he, my son is like, oh, no, you had a daughter. You just met her. And it's like, Athena. And it's like, oh, dude. It, um, immediately my brain was like, it, rem like, this isn't the first time we've had, like, a dream sequence thing like this. The last time we had something like this, at least to my recollection from what I can remember, is, uh, Rick's final episode, um, where he's basically injured, and obviously, like, he has a dream sequence where he sees, like... He meets, a, he meets a third person. I don't remember who it was. I know one was Shane. I know the, I know another one was Herschel. I cannot remember who the other person was. Do uh, remind me who it is in the comments down below. Or I might just end up looking it up myself. Whatever the case may be. But, um, yeah, it reminded me of that, you know. And so... Grace doesn't know what this is. She's thinking, like, you know, probably, like, you know, when someone dies, like, you know, she's thinking, like, this is kind of, like, maybe her brain, like, oh, eventually she kind of figures it out because she's, like, oh, like, after I died or something, like, maybe this is what it is, like, because, you know, her wish was to know that, like, her child was okay and in a place, and so looking at this world of, like, oh, my God, this is a world that we built together and everything, then, like, as they're walking through, we see, like, uh, Daniel and uh, Strand, and it's, like, are they friends? And it's, like... Yes, yeah, Morgan's like, yeah, something like that. It's like, ah! Then we see, um, June, you know, Dr. Dory. It's like, ah! And it's like, the little, the girl that was sitting beside her was like, that's definitely an older Charlie. And it's like, Charlie, her apprentice! Ah! In the future! The future! Uh, Spongebob memes. Um, but nevertheless, um, and then, like, we see, uh, Dwight and Sherry. They have two kids. One of them named John. I like to believe that's you know, in memory of John Dory, R.I.P. John, you know, that's what I'd like to believe that, but it could just be like, oh, we chose the name John, but I like to think it was because of Dory, uh, they ended up cho uh, choosing that name, you obviously hear about Alicia, um, she went and started her own place, Wes, um, Luciana, uh, went with her, um, they didn't really, uh, oh, no, I remember now, too, it's like that stadium, uh, Madison, like, that place before, like, Season three slash season four. Uh, that the oh no, it's all season four. Uh, the uh, baseball stadium. It's like she went back and kind of, and I think that's kind of neat to think about, like Alicia going back and doing that because it's like, well, for one, it's like her mom sacrificed to save them, and also that's the place she kind of helped like build. So it's like, and I I think it'd be nice full circle wise, especially kind of her being the last of her family to go back and build a play a place there. You know, um, that is also befitting that Luciana and Wes would be the ones to go with her too. So. I think that's uh, a pretty dope element. So I thought that was pretty uh, neat. But um, obviously, you know, 
Morgan wants to use this as an opportunity for Grace to get to know her daughter without having to reveal everything because it's like, yeah, it's a lot to kind of like process and throw at somebody. So they go and they're spending time. Like she still has um, um, Grace's like music. It's like the only thing she has left to remember her, her mom. And it's like, oh, it's it's sweet. Because um, she was humming a particular song and it's like, why are you humming? It's like, yeah, I don't know. She's like, I just, I like the song. And it's like, oh yeah, your, your mom and everything. Then they come across a car that says, like, the end, and then it's, like, the beginning, and Grace is like, it looks so familiar. I was like, what's this about? Because I figured it had something to do with that group, but I was like, what's this about? And then the car explodes. Morgan disappears, but then she remembers, like, it happened in real life that the car exploded. And basically, this is her, basically, her subconscious, because she's unconscious right now. Her subconscious is taking stuff, um, all her memories, and compiling it into this dream world of kind of what her wishes and her wants are. Plus, just throwing in everything because at one point later on, uh, what's his name? Riley, Nick Stahl's character, as well as other people from like that bunker group, uh, that cult group show up. And obviously, they're after Morgan because they want the key around his neck. Because we got an explanation for it. Like, Emil was hired to get the key. He didn't automatically have it. I thought he was a part of this group and he had it. But it's like, no, he had. He got hired to get the key. But then those other two were tra tasked with tracking him down. And obviously, Morgan ended up killing all three of them. So... That's what this is all about. That's why they're going after Grace and everything. They set that trap because that's what, once again, that, like I brought up last episode, I figured that was the reason why they were coming after Morgan. Um, I was like, right, because I, like I brought it up last episode, I was like, why would they know Morgan's name? It's like, oh, of course, because they know that he's the one that has the key and everything, so. Um, but when Morgan disappeared and Grace started hearing his voice, that's when it started, correct, like, Correcting in her brain like oh, I know what this is. This is a dream. I'm basically unconscious Morgan on the outside is trying to protect and he's trying to get in contact with June But about the time it's like yeah, they had no gas So it take about five or six hours to get to them because they'd have to go by horseback While these people are you know led by Riley are coming after them So he needs grace to wake up so he can move her and obviously it's like things kind of break a little bit like almost like a glitch in the matrix where like her daughter keeps killing the same zombie and over again. It's like, okay, this way to the wall until she kind of breaks free because she's kind of like, it's almost like lucid dreaming. I'm like, okay, I know I'm dreaming now. I'm kind of realizing that this is what my brain is. My brain is kind of fusing so much stuff together. And so it's not until, you know, she starts listening to the music because she realizes, because on the outside, um, uh, Morgan is making her listen to the music, hoping it would wake her up. And so eventually he takes the music off of her because it's like right because he needs to kind of prepare to kind of move her and defend her but um it's interesting that the moment like those guys pop up like she falls over from the contractions but so does athena and that makes her go like right because at first she's like none of this matters you're not real but in that moment she realizes oh my god this is real in a sense that you and i are connected so you are athena like inside my belly kind of in this dream sequence with me you know and it's and it's um you know, they end up uh, defending themselves against them, end up killing them, and um, they end up getting away. Because as they're walking, you know, it's like for, it was this actually really sweet moment because it's like for Athena being like, wow, you're my mom and everything. And it's a situation where it's like now she, because in this world, she never had an opportunity to know her mom. Her, you know, Grace died before she was born. But, you know, it's like now she can use this opportunity to really get to know her. And I love that the horse just magically pops out of nowhere so it's like yeah it's kind of elusive I, I don't know whether it's because she heard a horse and that's what triggered her or whether it's just kind of like nah this is what i'm used to so like she just magics the horse in um but nevertheless they're on their way and it's like oh yeah this particular oh right why do you like this is that oh yeah because of my dad you know because your dad liked it and it's like oh i hear morgan singing on so like, no no not morgan your biological dad and she kind of opens up about that so i thought that was kind of neat it's like right she talked about him a little bit in the past uh matthew like, yeah, the fact of the matter is there was always something there, but Grace kind of waited too long. And by the time they got together, eventually the world went to shit. But also, like, um, the nuclear plant, like, melted down and, like, the radiation and stuff. So it's sad, like, their story, um, it was not the same because it's a little different. But it's also, like, John and how John and um, June were only married for so long. And they were only able to spend so much of that time together as an actual married couple. That's a whole thing. I mean, they only spend so much time together as a couple. But still, they had, like, a longer window of time than Grace and uh, Matthew. But, um... Obviously, they make their way. And Grace starts kind of realizing... So, well, she realized it early on. And she's like, I gotta tell you. The fact of the matter is, we don't have that much time. Because she's like, my radiation, like... I'm going to die, like, you know, when I give birth to you. Because she's like, that's why in this dream sequence, 
That's why there's no version of me here. That's why I'm dead here because my subconscious knows like the radiation is going to kill me. Giving birth to you is going to kill me. And I'm just kind of, that's why I built this world the way it is without me. But for her, it's like, I don't have to worry. Like I was worried before, but now I don't have to worry. Like, you know, we don't have much time together, but at the very least we had this time. And also like, I know you're going to be okay. You're strong. And I know the world that's going to be built around you because the whole thing is, it's something we're going to talk about. Like the reason why, like everyone was kind of at odds and everything beforehand. Uh, it's a whole conversation about what to do about these people, how to handle, even how to deal with them. There were arguments, but Grace's death and the birth of Athena, everyone came together for that. They, you know, in that regard. So that's why I think it's kind of like this hope. She's something that everyone, the gap, that bridging that gap between everyone, that they, everyone kind of came together and eventually the community got built back together again. It's very similar in a certain regard to, um, you know, everything in like The Walking Dead. Like obviously like before, like after the time skip, like everyone kind of went their separate ways and it took like something like Alpha to kind of bring everybody back together again finally, you know, even though they were kind of so at odds for such a long time. So it was kind of a similar thing. And so... Obviously, there's also the thing of Athena having the key around her neck and being like, it was a, um, the price, it was supposed to be a reminder. My dad, Morgan gave it to me as a reminder of the price of peace. And so, also, it still kind of throws me for a loop because Morgan outside was like, okay, uh, either just leave. It's like, he just told him again and again, leave. And it proceeds to like knock them around and then eventually kills him. It's like, ooh, right, right, right. Morgan's, on, Morgan's straight up killing now. I forgot. It's still it's still not something I'm used to. He's been doing it for like most of this season, but it's still just something I kind of got right. Got to get used to it because he's been doing it for multiple seasons. I'm not killing anyone. So like to see him killing again, it's just, it's just kind of crazy to think about. But, um, and, um, he ends up stabbing like Riley and the guy's like, I'm a, you know, you haven't seen the enemy. I'm a come back. Um, uh, but on the inside, like Grace, Athena, and more, well, they're dealing with these guys. They kill them, but eventually they come back, and it's a thing of like, you know, you can't stop us. Um, but Morgan shows up and kills them, kind of like it does on the outside. And so it's a situation of Morgan's there to kind of, you know, send her off into the light so she can go back to the real world. And obviously, it's like, you know, she's hugging Morgan, you know, realizing like, you know, it's like I, she knows everything is going to be okay. Hugging Athena one last time, it's like, you know not wanting to say goodbye to her and you know it's like but it's like you don't have to worry about it. like I will always be with you I'll always be a part of you and I thought it was kind of a beautiful thing but I was also worried because I was like on the outside she stopped breathing I'm like no I'm like she's gonna come back but she's gonna come back just to die I was like no and for her to come back and she's like it's okay I've, I have a daughter I don't think I'm gonna survive this but Morgan's like no 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 you will she's like no I don't think I will but I've seen the future and she tells Morgan about the dream and he's even like what do you think that was she's like I don't know, like, you know, people near death kind of experience dreams like that, but she believes it was a vision of the future, what the future can be, and why this baby's so important. Obviously, Riley shows up later on, and literally barreling in with a car, like, could have nearly ran them over, but it's threatening to kill Grace, and it's like, all right, just give me the key, and I'll bounce, and she's like, right, uh, the price of peace, go ahead, Morgan, give it to him, this baby, this baby's going to be uh, what unites everyone. He's already lost. He just doesn't even know it yet. Morgan reluctantly gives him the key. And so Grace is like, it's okay. Everything's going to work out, Morgan. Morgan's like, okay, I believe. Because she'd even said earlier in the episode, she had a reluctancy in like what... She wanted to believe what Morgan believed about building everything. But, you know, but now to see like everything had been built what it is. And now she's a true believer thinking that everything's going to work out. So she left a message for Athena and the music um, and the giving birth. And I was like, okay. I was like, what's, I was like, okay, okay, here we go. I was like, oh boy. And the moment the baby was born and Morgan's looking down, I was like, oh, are we going to find out it's a boy? So that kind of nullifies everything. She did. I was like, wait, and she's like, what's, what's wrong, Morgan? I was like, no. It's like, why isn't she crying? I was like, no. I was like, please tell me. It's like, she doesn't start crying for a while, but it's like eventually get her heartbeat. Please, please, please. And it's like, nope. Athena died. I was like, what? I was like, No. That's so heartbreaking. And uh, then she realizes she's like the entire, like, because even Morgan's like, I don't, I don't understand. And she's like, the entire time I thought it was me. This was like uh, my dream. It wasn't my dream. It was her dream to spend like the life she would have had, the life she could have had is what the dream was about. Because she would, 
It's not Grace that was slipping away. It was the baby. Because that was the thing. She had w worried that, you know, Athena was going to grow up affected by the radiation. And it turns out it took it did take its toll on her. And it's like, no. And that's the thing. We still don't know whether or not Grace will live long enough. It's just like, no, that's heartbreaking, dude. And to me, the thing I was thinking about earlier since we were at this point, what I thought was kind of more depressing was like, Everyone Morgan's ever taught how to fight with a stick, like, everyone's kind of connected to Morgan through, like, the art of, like, using a stick, you know, not killing and stuff. Well, not necessarily not killing, but, yeah, everyone related to that is dead. Eastman, dead. Uh, Benjamin, if I remember correctly, because it's Henry's older brother. I want to say it was Ben. Yeah, he's dead. He never taught Henry, but Henry did pick up the stick just because of Benjamin and everything, so... I don't remember if he taught Henry anything, like, before he ended up leaving before the time skip. He might have. I don't remember. But, um, yeah, Henry's dead, too. And it's like, oh, Athena, you ended up teaching her the, the way of the stick in the future world. And it's like, oh, lo and behold, she's dead. Like, I, that's, I didn't have that, like I said, that didn't kick into my head. Like, maybe that, that's me overthinking it. It's like, oh, that's a little bit of a reach. Certain regards, it counts, but I'm like, that's too much of a reach. But it's just my mind went there. I was like, that makes it even more depressing, you know? It's like, regardless of her not, it doesn't matter whether or not she's actually, you know what also was clicking in my head too? I was thinking like, I mean, I think this is also, because once again, when you look at a lot of parallels between stuff, like they do stuff that's very similar to like the original show, like parallels to them, and they show you like the opposite side of things. Once again, it's something I didn't notice. And I, I've mentioned this in a previous review that someone had made a comparison of saying like, John's story is the dark side of what Rick's story could have been. Rick survived in this, John didn't. Like, he died. But it, they, there was like, almost like a bridge situation of like, oh, it, oh, it could have been. Oh, and like, we got the dark side of that. Very much so in this case because Lori, this is the inverse of Lori's situation. The mom giving birth to the child and obviously Lori dying because of it. And the baby surviving while we have Judith. Which is actually, like, it's a lot more interesting that they did it like that in the show because in the comic book judith doesn't survive she dies when Lori dies um because if i remember correctly it's actually um god what's her face she's in the first season of telltale's uh walking dead i can't remember her name larry's daughter uh lily right she's obviously a very different character in a tv show but uh in the comics she's the one that killed Lori, if i remember correctly uh, so Judith ended up dying. Like, Judith was never born. So the show made it a little more hopeful. Yeah, Lori still died, and you know, what ends up happening to her eventually getting eaten by walkers, like, after, like, she died. So it's not like she felt it, but still, her whole entire body was eaten. But luckily, Judith survived, so it was a more positive spin. This is, like, a very, like, uh, Grace is alive, which I'm like, hey, yay! But it's, like, at the cost of, you know, Athena. And it's, like, it was this, you know, and now even her being like, it was a dream. She thought she was seeing the future, and now that's all dash. It's almost like, so that also means, like, we gave away that key on false hope. It's like, this is a depressing-ass episode. This is why this is, I was like, I was thinking, like, oh, maybe I should watch other stuff first. I was like, no, watch Fear the Walking Dead first, because it's depressing. I need to get the depressing show out of the way so I can focus on the other, like, like, yeah, I'm, I'm sure other things I'm watching today are going to have depressing elements to it, but they're going to be a little more upbeat. It's just this universe is so depressing. It's like, I need to just, I need to go ahead and get that done so I could just watch. I'm, I'm going to take me a break after this because it's just like, I need a break after the depressing stuff. I will, I talked about the review. I had to take a break after that uh, John Dory episode. I had to. I couldn't take it. I was like, that was so heartbreaking. And it's like, this is heartbreaking. I'm like, this is too depressing. This universe is too depressing. I feel like even the original show isn't this depressing? I mean, because it's maybe because it's just been a while since like we had some character, major characters like killed off. Because the last ones we had was like, what was it that season um, nine? The end of season nine was probably like the last time we had like major character deaths in that regard. There were some in like season ten. Don't get me wrong, but it was like the major major ones were like that whole slew we got um, of people killed by Alpha at the end of season nine, like that in itself, uh, oh, I forgot, that wasn't even the season finale, that was like the pin ultimate episode, that was the episode before the season finale, jeez, I forgot, once again, like I said, I'm, I'm going on a whole tangent, but, uh, I'm interested to see where things take us going forward for here, like, I'm curious, like, what this is going to do to Grace, what is going to do to Morgan, because he was kind of believing in what Grace believed, and now to have that shattered, we still, because even, like, Riley was like, it doesn't matter, like, you know, like, 
basically getting that key. Like I said, I think that's like some nuclear weapons they're going to release and basically destroy Topside so you don't have to worry about it and they're just going to live underground. It's like, once again, that beautiful like dream and everything of what possibly could have been just kind of got washed away and it's like, it just makes it that much more depressing. But uh, like I said, we'll ultimately have to wait and see where everything takes us going forward into the next episode. Um, Jesus, I guess, you know, that's also another thing too. It's like, she was like, yeah, it wasn't an opportunity for my daughter to get to know me. It was an opportunity for me to get to know my daughter because, oh God, I need to stop. I just need to stop. Uh, to the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.